Um, so this session will be about OpenStack Manila in a telco context. So um, I, I am Mark Kodera, um, working at Deutsche Telekom. Um, I'm, uh, I'm an active contributor since the Havana release and mainly active in the QA and uh, storage sector. So I have with me um, Thomas Lichtenstein from NetApp and Christian Fey from SVA. So the, the question is how, how um, Manila fits in the telco cloud. Um, and our idea was to have an evaluation um, how far the development of, op um, of OpenStack Manila is uh, currently uh, um, um, there and how we could use it in our production, and production environment. Um, so we, we were talking about the use case that we see for, for shared file systems in the context of a telco. Um, we um, automated um, everything um, and built a test lab. lab. Um, this is everything open sourced, so available uh, for free, and we will we will see um, a demo about the the, uh, the automated test lab and an actual scenario test that we uh, um, developed during our project. So maybe a little uh, uh, to give give uh, give a little idea of how the team setup was. So. Um, Deutsche Telekom uh, acted like uh, a customer in that phase. And usually, if a customer wants to, to onboard, uh, let's say, a storage system or like fr from NetApp, uh, we, we will have an integrator in between. So SVA is one of our integrators that we usually have in Deutsche Telekom. So we choose this kind of setup, which, which is a kind of traditional setup for uh, building new services in, inside, of, uh, inside, of, in, inside of an enterprise uh, context. So, um, but OpenStack Manila is something quite new, um, and uh, we didn't expect that it's stable enough to directly go into our production system. So, um, we wanted to contribute um, our viewpoints directly to the community. So, um, everybody of, uh, of, uh, in our team directly contributed to, uh, to the community in the way he wanted to. So uh, we, we delivered use cases and discussed them in the, uh, in the mailing list. Um, we identified uh, um, test uh, cases and automated them and uh, contributed them back uh, to the community. So and the, the, the main idea was at the end to have an idea whether we could use Manila in our cloud, w whether we could uh, uh, um, design our architecture for the telco cloud that we have a shared file system storage in, in our architecture. Um, so let's talk a bit about our use cases that, that we see and why uh, OpenStack Manila is needed for us. So uh, actually, uh, we have this, this uh, picture on the left just to, to summarize w what kind of storage we usually have in the cloud. So if you're talking about OpenStack, you're, you're, you have block storage. So Cinder is the, um, the, the, the manager of uh, block storage devices. And so, so with block, block storage, is nothing else as a hard drive for a virtual machine. So you, you attach it to a virtual machine. So there are there's some drawbacks uh, in doing something like that because you, you as an infrastructure administrator do not, uh, do, do, uh, you don't have any control about the file system that is uh, 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 created in the virtual machine. So something like snapshotting and so on is a bit more complicated if you do not have any control. So you need, you need uh, if you want to, do, to create a snap snapshot, you need to control the virtual machine and the underlying infrastructure, which makes administration eff uh, uh, quite uh, 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 increased uh, in administration effort. Um, so on the other hand, we have object storage. And object storage is something new. Um, we usually have Swift or an, uh, storage with S3 interface. Um, the, f the, the usage of object is, um, if you want to use um, object in your application, you have to adapt the application. So it's a RESTful API, which is, uh, uh, scales a lot. So it's, I would say, one of the future topics for, for many telco applications that we see. But there is a gap in between. So 
shared file systems are uh, quite uh, a type of tra traditional storage. And um, the, th the cool thing on shared file system uh, storage is that um, the actual storage system has control about the file system. Snapshotting is a bit easier. Um, it it's, has less latency as uh, 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 much of the object storage. So, so this picture actually we uh, created on uh, a startup of our project, and Manila was quite new, and so we indicated in the OpenStack world that we have Cinder in place for block storage, we have object storage Swift or any other storage that gives uh, Swift an S3 interface, and Manila was one of the missing pieces. So Manila delivers an API to manage many other many types of uh, storage, and this is the, the kind of thing that we need for our telco cloud. So um, we are planning to, to create a huge network of data centers across Germany and Europe. Um, and we, for, for an NFV telco cloud, we're, we have two types of um, data centers that we plan. We have uh, front-end data centers, which will be close to the customer. Um, these are actually hosting the network functions. So network functions uh, like maybe uh, load balancing or firewalls and, and uh, chaining them together. Usually if you, if you have this kind of context in a telco, you have uh, real-time requirements, for instance. So these applications uh, usually do not uh, arise synchronously onto a storage. But we have also um, backend data centers. And these backend data centers will store the actual data for our data delivery, for instance. So video uh, streaming and so on will be stored on these backend data centers. Um, so our plan is to, to span this across Germany and Europe. Um, and one example for usage for, sh for shared file system in this context would be our uh, email service. So uh, we have the largest email platform in Europe. Um, and one idea would be that we store the um, mail header and bodies into the shared file system. Um, these, because the, the users of these shared file system, uh, the, of, of, uh, of mail browsers usually uh, are used to directly access the emails. Um, uh, the, the email body and the header, but um, it, when it comes to an, an attachment, you, we can think about having a, a, the attachment in an object store and just stream it to the end customers. So this is one of the ideas of, of the usage of an, a shared file system in our context. Um, so basically, now we are going a little bit deeper in what is, what is Manila about. Um, and we then show what we delivered uh, to the community. So I hand over to Thomas. Thank Thanks, Mark. Um, so I'm Thomas uh, Liechtenstein. I'm also, I'm working with NetApp. I'm a cloud architect uh, based in EMEA. Um, so to get everybody on the same page, uh, what, what we are talking about here today, um, so Manila is really uh, the shared file service of OpenStack. Um, what does it mean? So sh shared file service means typically we're talking about NFS or NFS shares or SIF shares, but the concepts really apply in, in a very similar manner to HDFS, for instance, um, or other shared file concepts that can also be uh, addressed over um, a Manila API control plane. Um, so why would you want to do that? So actually, back uh, a few years ago, uh, I think it was 2013, uh, it struck NetApp that um, there was a, you know, this gap within the OpenStack um, blocks or the OpenStack storage story that there was actually a missing piece, well, like um, Mark explained. So um, we asked our customers what kind of, you know, how much of your capacity is actually deployed on shared file service. And this number is surprisingly high. I, I don't know about you guys, but uh, we, ha we see within the industry that actually with, when it comes to capacity, around 60% or even more are stored on shared file services. So it, I think it's a no-brainer <coughs> to bring this on into the cloud as well. Um, and quite recently, you know, in the last year, Microsoft with Azure File Service introduced a similar concept and uh, service. And now, even you know, a few weeks back, Amazon followed suit as well. So um, we clearly see here OpenStack you know, um, tapping into new ground, obviously. And I think, um, personally, obviously, we have a heritage. You know, we can maybe come from object storage and block storage. But 
shared fossils have been untapped um, in, a, in a way. And Manila is really here to actually allow you to onboard maybe homegrown solutions or legacy workloads, but also maybe new applications that were just not be able to build before that, right? So what could you use this for specifically? Um, you know, simple things like, or centered things like home directories, of course, but also big data might be just be a valid use case as well. Um, the good news is uh, Manila is very similar uh, conceptually to Cinder. So that just as Cinder allows you to um, provision block storage, Manila really allows you to actually deploy shares, right? Um, so speaking about the concepts, um, so for one, obviously, there, is, there are the shares. So this can be any uh, protocol, mostly that will be you know, predominantly NFS or SIS, but also the other protocols. And then we also need to, because it's a shared environment, need to think about access rules, right? So for instance, for NFS, you want to make you maybe in ledger tenants define um, the uh, you know, access rules on an IP basis, or if you have an Active Directory server deployed, you might want to use SS SIDs. Um, we also need to think about how we actually tie the shares towards the uh, neutron networks of the tenants or the Nova networks of the tenants or, um, the, uh, or other networking solutions that you may see in the future. So Manila is really um, flexible in this regard. So there's the notion of a share network, which is um, just solving that need. Um, there's more concepts. So if you are de deploying Kerberos, for instance, or have other um, more advanced security services, this is also um, be, uh, be exposed, can also be exposed through Manila or addressed through Manila. Um, this is nice property, just as Cinder has snapshots, Manila also allows you to do snapshots on shares. And how this is actually implemented is uh, actually done by the backend driver. So this is a vendor-specific implementation um, that you are pretty much uh, well aware of from Cinder as well. Um, to this end, uh, Manila, which is very important, is not in the data path. It's uh, a control plane for that, for shared file services. And it's also multiple backend capable. So you can run multiple backends at the same time, just as with Cinder. Um, so what I wanted to talk about now is actually well, what was the foundation of our work here. So uh, when uh, Deutsche Telekom invited us for this uh, joint uh, evaluation, we quite early on decided that we wanted to do this evaluation in the open source community. So we actually built um, a fully automated test lab um, based on very common components that you're very well of. So for instance, um, uh, you are probably very familiar with DevStack and uh, uses maybe with Vagrant. So we, we're just using the same tools um, to deploy an open stack based environment uh, where Manila was enabled. And uh, in addition to that, in the same manner that you run the dev stack in an automated fashion, we actually added uh, the backend configurations for using a generic driver, which is um, the reference implementation for Manila, but also um, a NetApp-based um, backend using our simulator. So at the end of the day, this allows you to actually build and fer actually verify what we are talking about today uh, on your own end by just pulling this um, so the source code of the, or the configuration files for this automated lab and run this on your own laptop. Um, this was the foundation. I want, want to quickly give you an, um, a head start on how this looked like by, by showing you a demo. Um, it's a video where, so it's on, based on GitHub, so you can check this out and actually um, you know, deploy this on your own. You can also use the generic driver implementation as a backend. Um, so in this case, we're using the NetApp backend. And the familiar workflow is actually to you know, clone it and then issue a Vagrant up. And you grab a coffee, basically. But um, in this case, we will do a fast forward. We will deploy a service <coughs> VM, which will configure the NetApp backend uh, just with some DHCP and networking uh, configuration that we do in the background. And once that service VM is up, it's actually um, a Ubuntu-based image that is just pulling you know, um, you know, package, the package updates from, from source. It's also making use now of uh, some chef automation. And as the next step, once the service VM is up, it's, um, we are going to deploy a NetApp backend, uh, so using our simulator. That's a NetApp 
cluster data on tap system as a virtual machine. And w once the simulator is up and running, so we can also orchestrate that through an IP-based uh, protocol, so through what we call the Zappi calls. This usually takes six minutes, but um, we, we fast forward forwarding now. It's actually kind of like the fastest death stack run you ever saw, <laughs> I guess. Um, so now, it's the next thing, we run the usual death stack, which means uh, we are rolling out OpenStack, where with the specific capability of and uh, Manila being enabled and also be configured to speak to the, in this case, to the NetApp backend. Um, again, if you want to, you know, validate this on your own terms, you, you're free to check this out as well. Right. And uh, with that, uh, I will turn it over to Mark again, who will go into more details of what we did with this lab. Yeah. So. Um, <coughs> The, the question is now we had uh, we defined our use cases that we want to, to see in Manila that, that it's really working. And now the question is how can we test this? And so we, we, we created this automated test lab and we could do anything uh, uh, manually. Uh, but, but now um, since I'm heavily involved with the Tempest team, I, uh, I tr uh, I've uh, thought that it would be a great uh, uh, idea to, to automate these kind of scenario tests. So we, we discussed with the, with the Manila core team about that, and this was actually something that is, was missing in the uh, QA, QA process um, upstream. So uh, when it comes to, to quality assurance in, in OpenStack modules, uh, um, you, there's usually three kind of uh, types that you see. So you have usually unit tests that are just focused on functional block in the code. So the, these uh, 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 functional blocks were executed, but it's not that Manila itself is completely up and running. It's just mocking everything around away, and you just have to test the functional blocks. So this was already nearly with, I think, 90% coverage uh, in place. Um, so we didn't care about that, this one. So And then um, uh, after this, we, we usually have an, 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 uh, another approach to have API tests. So with that, you really have a, a running Manila uh, 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 backend, and you're you're trying to uh, test certain kind of API functionality. For instance, creating a share is one API call, and you just check whether this runs or not. So, but what it, what is missing with that is an end-to-end -end behavior. So, creating a share is nice, but you have to attach a share to a virtual machine. You have to mount the share in a virtual machine and write actual data on it. Then it's a real live end-to-end -end test. So, this is actually th the thing that we did in the scenario tests. So, um, the these tests are um, these tests run every code change in Manila now. So they are introduced to, to run um, in a non-voting job. So I think for Liberty One, we will, we will uh, uh, activate them as voting. That means nothing will come th uh, through, the, uh, through, the, uh, through the gate uh, that doesn't have running scenario tests. So th these, these are the tests that, that we actually delivered. Um, so I just wanted to show the, the, the actual code, how such a test looked like. And um, the actual uh, uh, um, scenario tests are quite abstract and quite easy to read. So uh, we, we see here the first line uh, that the security group was created, then a sh shared network. So we already heard from Thomas about the concept of shared networks. So it creates, it creates uh, neutral networks and assigning these networks to, to Manila. Um, then it creates an actual share, boots an instance, allows us access, and then tries to SHH individual machine and checks whether this works. So this is, this is uh, let's say, one of the, the, uh, the easiest cases that we had. So in the, in the current code, we have one uh, high-end test with two virtual machines. One virtual machine is writing data. Uh, the other virtual machine is reading data. So this is the real end-to-end -end test for, for, let's say, a basic Manila checkup. So um, yeah, so we wanted to, to show you a bit how this works. And we have a live demonstration how the scenario tests are actually look like. So I hand over to Christian. Thank you, Mark. Um, yeah, let me just quickly introduce myself. Um, my name is Christian Fey. I'm with SBA in Germany as a 
systems engineer for storage infrastructure. Um, what I want to do now is uh, just, just try to map the code snippet that Mark just showed into a, let's say, high-level picture uh, to just explain what the, the demo will, uh, will consist of. And yeah, we have our OpenStack cloud uh, with Manila, Neutron, and Nova. Um, probably there are other components involved, uh, as you know, but uh, our test main, mainly revolves around these guys. And when we start our Tempest test, it will, let's say, create a base. That means the, the share and uh, therefore the, the neutral net, the Manila share network, and the share server. And after that, it will um, boot an instance, since uh, all our tests work from a, let's say, client perspective. And this instance will then try to mount um, yeah, the actual chair, and if that succeeds, it will after that unmount and clean up the whole environment. So that is what, what the demo uh, will look like. Let's just um, look in it. OK, so what we have here is a um, yeah, naked, let's say naked OpenStack environment. There is no instances and no shares deployed at the moment. And what we will do now is um, run the actual test. So we'll advise Tempest to, to continue. So we, what we did is we, we did some yeah, minor modifications to the test in order to enable a stepwise walkthrough. Normally, this test would just run through without any manual intervention, but this is for, for demo purposes. And yeah, first step is creating the share network. As you can see in the background, there's uh, something going on in the topology. And after that, we create the actual share since we now have our base, our neutral net, the Manila share network, and the next step is now to create a share. You can see in, in the background the, the topology has uh, built up, and so this um, share server creation needs some, some sort of some seconds. Um, we can just wait for that. OK, you see that the share is created. And the next step is to, um, to boot an instance, since we need to, to have a test candidate that, that does all the tests. And um, yeah, after we booted the instance, we need to allow access for the share, and also that we can access this instance with SSH. And what we can do now is just have a look again. So you see there is our instance in the, uh, in the correct networks. And we can also have a look at the Manila UI, which is some sort of the uh, the, the Manila GUI in, in Horizon. And um, there we can see we have the uh, share networks in place that are created by the Tempest test, and also the shares. And if we drill into that, we can also see that there is already an um, export location. That is the, the actual mount path for the share. And um, if we look a bit down, then we can see that there is already a access rule defined, which allows our instance to, to mount the, the actual share. OK, so let's go back to our topology here and uh, continue with the test. So since the base is all there, we have the instance, we have the share, and so on, the next step is uh, at least our first test. So this is the verify SSH test. What this test does is it connects onto the VM and tries to ping the export location. With that, we just uh, try to find out if, if our environment is, is OK and if the whole networking stuff is there and in place. And um, Tempest is, um, yeah, works in a way that it, that it retries to SSH onto the machine until everything is settled. And as we can see, this verify SSH did work. So it was able to ping the, the share server. And so the next step would be to to actually mount the share on, on this instance. And um, yeah, you, you see it, uh, that, that also worked. So um, there's only the last step left. That means unmounting our share. And if you have a look at the background, uh, Tempest will now clean up the whole environment and delete the instance and the whole networking stuff. And there will, um, yeah, at the end, nothing be left there. And um, yeah, what, what Tempest at the end does is it prints out a time, how long it, how long it worked and what is the, um, the overall status. So um, normally that should be OK, but could also be the case that it's in, in error state, and then it would just print out um, yeah, what, what the actual error was. OK, so far with the demo. Um, I would now like to, um, yeah, to talk about the, the evaluation work we did and what, what were the findings 
So we, we call it um, what is working, what is missing. And before I go into that, I just want to say a word about the community. So uh, when we started with the Manila evaluation, our, let's say, first point of contact was actually the community. And we used the tools like GitHub and RSC and Launchpad. And probably all you here are quite familiar with the tools, and I do not need to, to explain how they work, since that would also take separate sessions. Um, but what I wanted to say, or what I want to do, is encourage everyone that wants to get in touch with Manila or OpenStack um, to participate in the community and, and do not be afraid to open bugs in, in, in Launchpad. There will nobody fight you or sue you if you, if you do that. And um, even um, if you do not want to open bugs, you can just ask questions in the IRC chat. And what, what we found out is that there was always helpful guys that, that gave us information. And uh, yeah, so we like that pretty much. Um, yeah, again, what is working, what is missing? We uh, have a little uh, yeah, overview about that. Um, first of all, the, this generic driver at the end provides storage at ease. So to be honest, if that would be standing on the right side, we <laughs> would have at least big trouble. Yeah? So, but happy to have that on the left side. Um, we also have, as you just saw in the, in the demo, uh, basic integration into Horizon. That means we can create and, and, and display shares. It would be nice to have a more advanced integration, but um, there is this nice Manila UI project, and there's a lot of stuff going on. So we, will, we are sure that that's, this will be improved further. Um, what we also have is some sort of basic error handling or protection against minor failures. That means if we, for example, do not have the correct license in our system or have not enough backend storage or whatsoever, um, Manila would during the share create stay in a clear error state and not have some sort of fuzzy creating state that we need to clean up with whatever hacking. So that's quite nice. It would be even nicer if we would have a more consistent error handling in order to maybe have the driver to give some sort of yeah, information back to Manila, what was the reason for the error. For example, license not found or, or no space left. Um, yeah, we would like to have that. Um, same goes with documentation. Um, there is documentation available. There are Manila Wiki, and also there is documentation in the code. But yeah, if you compare it, for example, with Cinder, it's yes yeah, only little documentation available. Um, to continue, Manila is at the moment aware of multiple storage backends, which is very nice. You can use a mixed a mixed storage uh, strategy with a generic driver or with NetApp and other vendors drivers. Um, with that, you can also make use of different storage classes. That means you can provide shares from SSD storage or from SATA storage. And if you have a nice storage box that is capable of thin provisioning or other fancy features, you could also use the, the share types or extra specs to, uh, to make use of that. Yeah. And uh, probably some of you are familiar with NetApp systems or cluster data on tap. Even there, um, it is possible to use the advanced network features um, on these systems. That means having multiple uh, network interfaces. That's quite nice. And additionally to that, you have the advanced security features. Means you can attach um, your system to a directory service. What we would like to see, at least from a customer point of view, is um, the ability to migrate shares in and between uh, different storage backends. Um, we know that this is a very hard job, and it's not, not easy to implement that, but it would be nice to just have a talk about that and, and uh, maybe get the chance to, to improve that or to, to establish that. Same is with uh, resizing shares. So we would like to have resizing, but uh, yeah, again, we have multiple storage backends, and yeah, some of them are capable, some not. And um, I think there is just a design choice needed if or if not. Um, yeah, um, third-party vendor testing is also an interesting topic. Um, from what I know, uh, NetApp has, I think a week ago, established that, so they have their the testing environment ready. Um, hopefully, the other vendors will try to catch up with that and, and also implement that. And uh, yeah, integration into Heat um, would also be a nice feature. And from what we know, it will be available in uh, Liberty Milestone 1. Yeah, so when we um, created the, the project or started with it, we, we had some or Deutsche Telekom created use cases from, from what they want to see from, from Manila or how they would use it. 
and I would like just to go through the use cases and um, check if Manila is capable of, of fulfilling them. So first one is quite easy, create a share and use it in a tenant. That, that works actually. <laughs> um, we can also assign pre-existing shares to, to other instances, for example, with uh, just extending the, the security rule or the access rule. We can um, yeah, consume share or, or storage from uh, even from instances that are not mediated by Nova. We have the ability of uh, cross-tenant sharing in place. We can uh, at least deactivate the share. That means we, we, det we detach the share and do not destroy the data. So um, that makes sense uh, if you, for example, from uh, legal requirements, need to keep the data for a year or a month and uh, yeah, do not clean them up directly. Um, but at the end, you can also delete the share. means detach it and then destroy the data to free space. What is not possible, and you see it with sc screwdriver, um, we can actually not resize the share and we cannot uh, yeah, copy or migrate existing shares at the moment. But all in all, that's from my point of view a good average that Manila is, is capable of. And yeah, with that, I would like to give back to uh, Mark. Yeah. Thank you. OK, so the main question of our project was, is uh, Manila ready for the telco cloud? Um, so it sounds like an easy question. It's it's not easy to answer that. Um, the, the, maybe the answer is it, it depends a bit. So on for for the telco cloud or for enterprises, it's quite important to get uh, to get maintenance by a uh, distributor. So what is currently missing for Manila is that an enterprise distribution uh, package Manila as uh, uh, as part of their product. So that's why we can't use it in the current state for our production. Um, the other thing that uh, that needs to be considered when talking about Manila is uh, the the quality depends uh, much on the uh, underlying driver in implementation. So we see here a different uh, um, kind of quality from uh, from vendors. So if you're considering having Manila in your production, you have to have a look at the, the driver um, and, and really test the things that you want to use there. Um, so in, uh, to give a little bit of conclusion and a summary, so overall Manila uh, exceeded our expectations. We see a really responsive community uh, of many vendors. Um, really important for us as, uh, as telecom is that we are not in a silo and, uh, and locked for one solution. So um, this is exactly what Manila gives us for, uh, for uh, shared file systems. So um, quite often where we discovered bugs, um, there was already a solution uh, um, in, in the community uh, uh, available. And so this was really, really great experience. So further steps for, for this effort is now we want to try. So we have now built a completely virtualized environment to test these things. Now we would like to see how it behaves on a real bare metal environment with a real OpenStack installation, not based on DevStack. Um, so to be more productive like. Um, so another thing is uh, establishing performance tests. So it's not only about performance of the storage. It's also we can stress test Manila to see whether there are race conditions or not. So these, these two aspects are quite uh, important for us because we want to manage many multiple data centers. And it could be that there is uh, some kind of load. And race conditions are usually something really bad, which happens quite often in, in OpenStack. Um, Another point, for sure, we need um, Manila HA. Um, this is something where we currently not having a closer look, but for sure, this is something that that needs to uh, to uh, get, uh, uh, let's say, um, described um, if you want to use it in the production. N another uh, way what we are currently thinking is uh, improving the scenario tests. For sure, this is uh, we have an initial set now from scenario tests, but we need to improve that. One important thing for us here is um, having heat integrated tests with OpenStack Manila. <coughs> so thank you, and I think we are, have some time for questions if there are some. Yeah, 
So th this is something that, that is currently under discussion, how to, to get, let's say, the location um, of, the, sh of uh, the share that is created into the virtual machine. What is currently is a, it's a complete manual job. So for the automated tests, it's quite easy because you create a share, you have the information where the export location is, and you just give it uh, into the, your SSH command. But for it's a real life thing, you really need to, to have something like whatever agent or, or other technology to 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 mount it. Yeah, but I think it's the same uh, thing for Cinder because you have to mount your your volume that you attach, and you have to know where it is and so on. So this yeah, is for Cinder, you at least now can run something like DLK ID. Mm -hmm. You can't do show export. Yes. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, and I think, one of the design sessions that we, I think, already yeah. had. And um, yeah, so this is something that is currently under discussion how to do that. Yeah. Please use the microphone at the back of the room for questions, please. Yeah. All right. So is this a question or is someone running away? Just <laughs> 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 oh, sorry. Yeah. It's, it looks like it's a question. question. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, so you have a keen interest in uh, um, Tempest. Uh, so do I. I was curious if there's a possibility to, as you get closer to production, if that, if those real-world tests could be somehow merged back into Tempest so that the vendors of the drivers have a better idea about how, where's the bar that they need to hit. So, so the test that we actually see was just a bit uh, 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 adapted, but it w it's, it's already available in the code. And, and uh, for the third-party vendor tests, um, they, sh they should use these tests as baseline to see whether it's actually working or not. Correct. Yeah. I, I was uh, interested in, I guess, what you would like to do with Tempest next and how that might look. Uh, where you bring the, the real world production mm. meets Tempest. Yeah, I mean, do you have ideas about that? So it's so, so our idea where we define these use cases and we we are started to to create test cases from these use cases. So and th this is actually what we are trying to do. I mean, the the thing is you can't do a lot of heavily complex tests uh, tests like having ten VMs and so on in the gate because. Because th this kind of test will take a long time, and you cannot do that regularly. So, for sure, we could define some additional tests for production environments um, in a repo, but uh, in a repo, but not in the let's say actual active scenario tests. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank, thank you, everyone. <laughs>